We are ready to start our Chapter 11 lectures on Southeast Asia. Today's lecture is Chapter 11, Lecture Number 1, where we will discuss the geophysical, climate, and environmental aspects of our region. Our chapter learning objectives include to give reasons for the degradation of Southeast Asia's forests and coastal environments, outline the energy resource endowments and challenges confronting the region, describe the economic role of Southeast Asia in the larger process of colonialism, as well as the function of ethnic Chinese in this economic system, explain the in economic growth characteristics of modernizer and reformer countries, account for the diversity of development in Southeast Asia in relation to demographic factors, understand how Singapore's economy is spatially embedded in the region and the global economy, specify the various ways race or ethnicity has driven the development process in Malaysia, identify the core peripheral relationships between Java and the outer island Indonesia, as well as recent government measures to relieve these geographic tensions. Describe the national and local problems associated with geographic concentration of economic growth in Thailand, and contrast experiences of Vietnam and Myanmar in respect in respective involvement with the global economy. This map is on page 504 of your text and are the major geophysical features of our region. Let's start with the Philippines. The Philippine is a land of many, many islands. Um, much separation between some of these regions create a core peripheral relationship between Manila and other large cities with the rest of the region, often remote um, and not within good reach of governmental control. We look at the peninsular region of Southeast Asia, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, and the peninsular part of Malaysia. The insular part of our region are the island regions, and this includes Indonesia and parts of Malaysia as well. Uh, as East Timor Leste. If we examine the peninsular region, this is a region of rivers and mountains, mostly running in a north south direction. We have the Red River coming into northern Vietnam out of China, a region of some conflict due to the provision of water and population and ethnic tensions. Laos is a uh, relatively uh, poor country, uh, not well developed. Cambodia has a long history of uh, civil war, especially following the Vietnam War. This was an uh, area of conflict. Thailand uh, has many strong developmental characteristics. Bangkok is a primate city and controls the greatest aspect of its economic activity, but has many environmental problems relating to the rivers there, including the Ping and the Chao Phraya rivers, which uh, on which the deltas, um, the river deltas of these rivers or streams uh, is the site of the city of Bangkok. Myanmar. Um, is also a region of civil conflict. It is a authoritarian society that has uh, conflict with the potential of democratic rule. Uh, it tends to be an agricultural region, not well developed. The mountain regions, the mountain ranges in places like Vietnam and in Thailand tend to be, as well as in Myanmar, tend to be the home of more outcast ethnic groups and also um, kind of the growing space for many of the rebellions in the region. The 
insular portion of Indonesia and Malaysia here in the south, as well as the west side of the island of New Guinea. The west side of New Guinea has more cultural and economic characteristic and ties to Southeast Asia, and as such, it is considered part of Southeast Asia, whereas the west part, I'm sorry, the east part, we will consider in our final chapter of Oceania, where it tends to have more Oceania-type cultural and economic characteristics. Timor-Leste, uh, East Timor, is a region of conflict that has been invaded numerous times by Indonesia, is now an independent country, has suffered greatly from uh, almost colonization from Indonesia, and now has uh, potential oil um, resources being developed in cooperation with Australia. The island of Java is the... Uh, most densely populated region of Indonesia, Jakarta being the primate city, the remaining islands here to the east tend to act more as a periphery to the strong economic centers on the island of Java and the high population densities. You look around this map in general, you see this again is uh, in the Pacific Ring of Fire. It's a region of tectonic plate activity. A number of plates come together here, the Indian plate, the Eurasian plate, Australian plate, the Philippines plate, and the Pacific plate all come together to create a um, region of tectonic activity, earthquakes, and occasional tsunamis that devastate regions, um, places within our region. About the region, the region is a large um, and small peninsulas and islands Two constituent subregions, mainland China or southeast China. I'm sorry, let's try that again. Mainland or southeast Asia. Uh, countries that are physical, physically part of a continent include Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, and Myanmar, as well as insular southeast Asia or the island region includes Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Brunei, Tremor Leste, and the Philippine Islands. Landforms. Wide expanse, Southeast Asia stretches more than 3,000 miles with surrounding oceans and seas included. It is equal in area to India and the neighboring states there. It's situated almost entirely in the tropics. It has important river basins, including the Irwadi and Salween rivers in Myanmar, the Ping and Chao Faria rivers in Thailand, the Mekong River in Thailand, Vietnam and Cambodia, and the Red River in North Vietnam. Bangkok, flooding in the industrial region. The delta region that Bangkok is built on is very low land, is subject to occasional flooding from the wet monsoon season in the summer. Rains upstream create large amounts of water coming down the various rivers that feed into this delta. And often uh, due to the urban buildup creates channelizing as well as obstructions to the flow of the water. The delta is clogged with uh, development, and all these together create a situation of flooding. Bangkok, of course, is the major economic uh, activity site for Thailand, and when these events occur, the uh, economic system of Thailand can break down um, due to the fact that Thailand is the site for industrial production of many automobile components. Uh, and components of other natures and other industries. These industries uh, and their globalization and uh, dependence upon Thailand all often have to shut down entirely. A uh, good example is a recent flood in Bangkok where Toyota and Honda were un unable to obtain many of the components needed to construct their vehicles that are manufactured in Bangkok and therefore had to reduce production in those years 
when flooding has occurred. This map, which is not in your textbook, uh, but I think it demonstrates the, the delta region, the number of streams that feed from the uh, drainage region of Thailand in the west into the deltas near Bangkok. We see large areas uh, feeding water into the Bangkok area deltas. Um, in addition, this area experiences cyclones and uh, other less intense low pressure systems that bring massive waters um, up the valley and into some of the mountain ranges, creating orographic rain and high amounts of runoff, which then uh, result in flooding of, by, of Bangkok. Landforms. The mainland has numerous and broad interior alluvial river valleys. They provide for substantial population concentrations um, and agricultural production sustained by soil enriched floodwaters. The, of course, these are alluvial plains. The alternating from west to east, you have bands of mountain ranges and rivers that run north and south. So you have a mountain range, a river valley as we move from east to west, another mountain range, another river valley. Most mountains that <clears throat> average only about 3,000 to 5,000 feet in elevation. Insular Southeast Asia is an island and sea environment. Most population clusters are located along the coastal plains. Uh, the exception to this would be uh, the islands of Java, Bali, and Mandura in Indonesia, where high rural population densities occupy rich soils of volcanic origin. Traditional economic activity focuses on agriculture, fishing, and maritime trade. Sweeping volcanic arcs that have pushed into the edges of the Indian and Pacific plates uh, often create uh, volcanic peaks reaching up to 10,000 feet. At the edge of the volcanic arcs are deep oceanic trenches marking tectonic plate boundaries. And as we said, this creates certain environmental issues such as uh, tsunamis as well as earthquakes. The climate here is basically a monsoon climate. The mainland has a more distinct wet and dry season with the wet season similar to what we've discussed in South Asia. Uh, the summer is the wet season as the intertropical convergence zone brings rain May through October. Uh, and cyclones, of course, later in the season create uh, potential environmental disasters. The dry season tends to run from November to April. In insular Southeast Asia, it is a much more complex monsoon season, depending upon the latitude, uh, but there tends to be more consistent rain uh, during both the wet and dry monsoon seasons. Environmental challenges include deforestation due to rapid in uh, urbanization, the cutting of trees for export in terms of commercial logging. Also, illegal logging is rampant. The construction of boats and housing and the clearing of forests for palm oil plant plantations. In coastal environments, due to plate tectonics, earthquakes are common and tsunamis can cause much damage uh, even far away from the earthquake source. Monsoon wet seasons can flood rivers on the coastal environments, uh, but most of the population also lives here, and so that creates a, a demographic hazard. Urban as well as agricultural air pollution also contribute to environmental challenges. The commercial logging, both legal and illegal, supports wood-based manufacturing, building construction, and pulp and paper production. Forests are cleared for palm oil plantations. Palm oil is used as a food, soap, cosmetics, um, and the palm oil plantation biomass residue is used in biofuel production. 
coastal mangrove forests are being cleared to make way for shrimp ponds, uh, shrimp farm palms, and have long been used for dye and charcoal, the mangroves that is. Uh, forest fires are both natural and intentionally set to clear forest for palm plantations and farming spaces for shifting cultivators. In the larger Southeast Asian region, 80% of coral reefs are at high or medium risk as a direct result of human activities. There are many sources of coral reef degradation. Large-scale agriculture, logging, and mining all dramatically increase sedimentation rates of rivers, resulting in poor coastal conditions for reef growth. Um, add to that the clearing of mangrove forests along the deltas, which also um, remove any kind of limitating natural factor on um, the erosion of soils into the surrounding seas on the coast. Urban source pollution runoff and offshore oil spills have also extracted a toll on the coral reefs. Extracting coral uh, reef resources is another serious problem. Artisanal resource extraction has always existed, but increased demand for coral reefs and fish put greater pressure on reef sustainability. For example, coral is used in road foundations and as a source of lime for mortar. The export market for home decor and tourists are also important. Reef fish are killed by blast fishing, a common practice throughout Southeast Asia. Although efficient in the short term, repeated explosive blasts eventually disintegrate coral reefs. Um, chemicals are also used for uh, fishing and can be lethal to the coral reefs. Tourists on diving vacations, particularly in Thailand and the Philippines, also do physical damage to coral reefs by breaking off pieces as souvenirs. Shifting agriculture, the forest fires here uh, blanketing Malaysia and Singapore and large parts of Indonesia. This is discussed uh, uh, in a special section on page 510 of your text. The region has suffered for years from annual bouts of fog and smog, I'm sorry, smog caused by slash and burn farming on the Indonesian islands of Sumatra and Kalimantra. And this picture and small discussion is on page 508 of your text. This shows shrimp farming ponds. The shrimp farming has replaced the native mangrove forest, which protect the river delta regions, um, prevent uh, massive erosion. The shrimp farming itself has many problems in terms of providing a viable food source, a sustainable food source, as many of the ponds have pollution problems because they're in the lower reaches of the river. The pollution flows into the ponds, polluting the farm-raised fish. Uh, shrimp are not exclusive to this problem. There are also other fish that are raised um, in this region and in this form in uh, farms of this type. In addition, agricultural pollution, uh, herbicides and fertilizers can create uh, algae blooms and other problems that um, prevent good growth or regional problems in fish agriculture. Also, uh, because the uh, marine life is confined to these ponds, there are bouts of uh, diseases that may run through a particular farm and are difficult to eradicate. Also, the ponds tend to contain the pollution, uh, and as the fish consume materials within these ponds, they also um, have chemical um, pass through their bodies and may be there when they're served to market. I personally prefer uh, wild caught fish and I try to avoid uh, farm raised um, marine food simply because of the chemical aspects of the problems with pollution and with agricultural runoff. Well, that's it for our lecture one, 
We'll continue on to Lecture 2 in our next discussion. Thanks for being here.